It's the event that's hopefully changed the world. And now, two weeks on from George Floyd's death, today he will finally be laid to rest. But as his funeral takes place, the fight for justice goes on and the campaign to remind everyone that Black Lives Matter will continue. Well, we're joined now by Little Mix's Leanne Pinnock and singer and broadcaster Jamelia to reflect on today's event and what it will mean for the future. Um, before we begin, Leanne posted this video on her Instagram on Friday. My reality is constantly feeling like I have to work 10 times harder and longer to mark my place in the group because my talent alone isn't enough. My reality is wanting to see other artists who I know are so talented but will never get the opportunities opportunities I have had because to the industry they are not marketable. Oh, Leanne, um, thank you for joining us this morning. And you can see there how emotionally charged that post was. It must have been mm. difficult for you to do, but one that you felt compelled to share. Yeah. Why was that? Um, so I spoke about my experiences briefly last year, and I just didn't feel like enough people cared, like enough people were listening. Um, and obviously this is the first time in my life that the whole world is speaking about racism speaking about black lives and I just so overwhelmed by it and I just thought you know what I I feel like I need to kind of get rid of this pain that I've been carrying around for nine years um and also hopefully relate to people and yeah I just thought it was the right time to post it. Tell, tell us then what that nine years was like um you say that you felt lonely quite obviously you were posting about it last year but nobody was listening it just wasn't registering so what was it like for you? Oh, um, it was weird because a lot of people would say to me, it's in your head, it's in your head, like, of course people love you, what do you mean? Um, and obviously I, my team, I only have one mixed race lady that works for me. Um, I'm touring to predominantly white countries and just that sort of sense of feeling like, like a misplacement sort of, sort of feeling and just not like I really belonged and, yeah, and I could only really speak to my family and some of my friends, and I just felt like a lot of people just didn't understand why I felt the way I did. Um, but yeah, and like even when I look, when I watch that video back, and I can just see how much pain that I'm carrying. And but now I just feel like people are actually starting to understand and starting to educate themselves and see that this problem is it's it's massive, and we need to talk about it and it, there needs to be a change because it, we just we can't go on like this anymore. Over 400 years of, of oppression, it's, it just can't, can't go on anymore. And so now knowing that conversations are being had and more importantly, conversations are being heard, like you said, this fell on death ears a year ago and it, we, it's different now, thankfully. What does that feel like? Oh, um, just, I just feel overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by it all. I think I speak for the a lot of the black community and when I say that it's a sense of frustration because obviously we've been living with this for so long but I guess now as I say like the whole world is speaking about it and and it's kind of hopefully there is going to be a change and I feel hopeful I feel hopeful. Do you think that the white community's eyes have been opened now? I definitely feel like they have been opened yeah um, I think it's so amazing. Like I couldn't have these conversations about race with some of my white friends, but now they are, they are educating themselves and they're having these awkward conversations. And and it's just so I feel like almost quite whole with it. Um, yeah, it is. It's amazing. And I think finally people are starting to to wake up to this reality that we've been living with for so long. So you went um, to one of the protests on Sunday and a lot has been made in the news. We've seen that, you know, with the acts of violence at these protests, but for you, your experience on Sunday was solidarity, actually, that you felt that you were beginning of, of, uh, at the beginning of a new era there. So just explain your experience. I honestly, it was one of the, the most beautiful experiences I've ever had in my life. Like everyone coming together, as you say, it was such a sense of unity. Um, so many different races, so many different ages, all there for the same thing, for change, for black lives. And it was just, oh my word, it was just overwhelming. I've never, ever seen anything like it. But it was peaceful. It was, yeah, it was just beautiful. There have been protests in the past. There have been what looked like there were going to be pivotal, world-changing moments. Mm. And then the world moved on 
again, something else came up on the agenda and it was pushed back on the agenda. So how do you feel that have we got enough momentum this time? Well, as I said in my video, it's this cannot be a moment. It has to be a movement. And I, I don't I feel like people are angry. I don't feel like this is this is going to end anytime soon. It can't until there is change. But I do, as I said, I feel hopeful, but we, we just have to keep the conversation going. We just have to. OK, um, Leanne, we'll come back to you in a moment. Let's um, bring in Jamelia now. Jamelia, thank you for joining us this morning. It's lovely to talk to you as well. Um, and I just wondered, what, what's, what's life like for you at the moment going through this? Because you've been on Twitter, you've posted things, and I just wondered what the reaction has been for you, how you feel about it. Um, I mean, I have to, first of all, hi, Leanne. Um, I just want you to know that, you know, I'm so proud of you, and I want you to know that you're not alone in your experience. Um, but... Um, just going back to what you just mentioned, Holly, I think the experience for me is not, you know, this is not new. Yes, it is kind of more inflamed, but I think it's more inflamed because, as Leanne mentioned, everyone is talking about it. So it's a, it's a prime opportunity to have very important conversations. Um, I, yes, I am angry, but I've been angry for a very long time. I'm 39 years old and um, I've, you know, experienced racism probably every day of my life. And um, I've mentioned this before, but I believe that even our, our very existence, particularly when you are, um, you know, forward facing and people can see you and particularly in the public eye, you are open to so much, so much racism and so much kind of hatred um, and, and racial bias and, and, and even just little microaggressions that happen on just, you know, that, that, that I think white people are completely oblivious to, would absolutely describe themselves as, as not racist. Um, but it's, for me, it's an opportunity to have a conversation and uncomfortable conversations that implore particularly white people to, to, to acknowledge their privilege, but also to... To, to, to confront it and to confront the systems that they benefit from and allow an opportunity to be a part of dismantling the systems that support all of these racist actions that we're seeing today. You say, um, uh, you say yeah, there's, I, got, there's, got to be, there's got to be a conversation. There have to be continuing conversations. And I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm thrilled, and we've discussed this during the course of the week, I'm thrilled with the conversations that have been had in our house. Um, yeah. I think lockdown helps as well because families are much more together. So, you know, you are spending a lot more time mm. together and you can have these face-to-face -face conversations. Yeah. The conversations have to be difficult. They have to be awkward. Um, mm. But at, at the same time, it, it's quite obvious that it is not enough to say, I'm not racist. You have to be actively anti-racist. That's the black community and your allies. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and I think that's one of the main things that I've been speaking quite loudly about recently. It's the active, you know, yes, the protests are fantastic. I think that they help to raise awareness. I think they will make a difference. I think they um, encourage even politicians to, to pay attention. But what is going to happen after that? How can we all be a part of dismantling systemic racism? And we have to understand that systemic racism is where the real problems are. We wouldn't have any of these racist incidents if systemic racism didn't exist to support them. Do you, do you dare to dream yet that this is the, the awakening that you've been waiting for? I mean, do, can you hold on to that hope? Or do you think that, like Phil said at the beginning, that life will move on? Um, honestly, I think, I think my very reason for, for being so vocal, for sacrificing my career, is because... I need things to change. It's not just, it's not enough for it to be a hope. So I will keep as the racists say, banging on about race until I see a difference. I have four children and I, I'd, I'd be so disappointed to send them out into a world where they experience exactly the same things I did. Um, I feel, you know, so, so I have to have hope. I have to be hopeful that that people are paying attention and not just today, not just on the protest, not just when you see a black man being murdered on camera, but every single day committing your, 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 your life to, you know, to, to being a part of change. Yeah. Do you think that, um, and we've watched all sorts of different forms of protest, um, yeah. that 
a protest has to be, I'll use the word, robust? I think... I think this being the biggest civil rights protest in history um, is quite telling, quite... It has to be effective because it, it means that there is a social consciousness that is changing. Um, I do think it has to be, you know, you have to... It has to be in a sense where you cannot ignore it. And, you know, the protesters, I think they've done, you know, a phenomenal job and... Um, but. It's not just about protest. It's not just a one-pronged, um, for want of a better term, attack. We have to attack this from many different sides. And um, but I think protests are, you know, effective and important, and um, and absolutely capable of bringing about lasting change. Mm -hmm. Leanne, do you? What was the reaction from? Um, and I, I say this because when. And, I, and we all did it, hopefully, for the very best of intentions, that we uh, posted the black slate. And I turned off the comments. The only Instagram post I have ever turned off the comments underneath, because I read down and saw that I was on a limited occasion, but I was allowing there to be a platform for racism underneath that post. And I thought, I'm not having it. I'm not having I'm not being a part of this. And I, I turned off the comments. What sort of reaction, Leanne, have you had to being so honest and wearing your heart on your sleeve? Oh, um, it's actually been such, as I said, it's been such a weight lifted for me. But I think the comments, it was, it was such an overwhelming response. Um, I was hearing from people that were, have been in the same sort of experiences that I've had. So being the black girl um, in their girl band in the pop industry, um, saying how they felt exactly the same way as me. And I've never, ever had conversations with people that have had similar experiences to me, so... as in being in the pop industry. So, for me, that was just, like, such a... Yeah, just a very, very yeah, overwhelming... Can I, can I just ask, because, Jamelia, you oh. said something there. You said, I sacrificed my career and what people will say was banging on about this. Leanne, you said that, you know, people weren't listening before, but was there also an element of, if I say this... I could sacrifice my career here because people will just think I'm banging on. Yeah, an element of that, definitely. Um, but I think for now, this is just something that you can't ignore. This is something you can't be quiet about. I don't yeah. care how much I preach about this. I don't care how much I say because this is my reality. This is so many other people's reality. And what's the point in even going on if we can't get a change. Like, yeah. I'm not just going to sit here and not say anything. Like, I, I don't care if I lose fans. And I already know that um, some people that have posted um, have lost a lot of fans. And I just think it's, it's disgusting. But yeah. it just proves, proves mm. what, what we're saying. Absolutely. It proves yeah. that yeah, proves it the conversation's got to be had. That's for sure. Mm. Uh, thank you both. Thank you both Very of you. Very much indeed. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and congratulations on the engagement. Yes, I know. Yay! <laughs> I know, I know. Thank you. Oh, well done, you two. You, what uh, you've got to do, you. though, is you've got to go out now and buy some clothes for those co-hangers. <laughs> that is so rude! <laughs> 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 I've been having clear-out. <laughs> you have.